in the afternoon, when I hold my girl's hand and walk towards Daniel, he almost made me cry. I just managed to hold a tear in my eyes. But at that time, 2009, when I leave my two kids in Ho Sung Agricultural School as an adult, this is single one time I really cried in the airport. Daniel, no worry. I have no such feeling today. <laughs> I was the first one, besides the medical staff, to have held Daniel in my arms. My first impression was, how come your leg is so long? <laughs> Just stick out like this. The way Daniel looked at Harriet and the way they talk, I think my prayer is answered. Because when they were young, after dinner, we always pray together before they have dessert. No prayer, no dessert. Why? Because I want them to create a, a sense of you know, harmony and peace. So Daniel and Savi have this practice in the past 30 years. When we have dinner together, after dinner, we always sit down and pray together. As I got to know Harriet, I quickly found out that she was the biggest supporter and cheerleader anyone could ask for. And she's actually always down for an adventure. Whether it's waking up at 5 a.m. to do sunrise photo shoots with me, camp preventing adventures in the middle of nowhere, or last minute overseas trips. When I was going through a tough time, I booked myself a flight to Bali. I messaged Harriet to see if she could come along, and sure enough, she got her leave from work and booked flights straight away to come with me without hesitation. Harriet has always been such a supportive friend. But if there's one thing that's important to Daniel, it's ensuring that his friends, his family, his loved ones are looked after. He's a dedicated son to his parents, a loyal friend to us, and a, a wonderful brother to Xavier. In my case, he has quite literally traveled across the entire world to help me settle into a new country and he came for just five days to do that. Over the last three years, I've seen him take his loyalty to a new level with you, Harriet, and the way he looks after you. He spent more time driving up and down the M7 <laughs> between Rouse Hill and Holsworthy than I think he ever imagined. And I guarantee you, he'd do it all over again if you ask him. Now to Harriet, my wife. From the moment I met you, I knew I had to get after you. When you rejected me initially, <laughs> I knew you'd come crawling back. <laughs> after the COVID restrictions were lifted, one of our hangouts was at Blacktown Drive-In Cinema. While I was fretting about what to eat for dinner, you magically whipped out two boxes of beef with rice that you made for me at home. Being someone who is obsessed about food, you sure already knew the way to my heart in those early days. You were so sweet to me during that time, and to this day, I still couldn't believe that I rejected you a few weeks later when you finally decided to ask me out. Luckily for the both of us, I almost immediately realized my grave mistake and came begging for you to take me back. <laughs> to my family, to Xavier, my brother, who has known me the longest. Saying bye to that is honestly really tough. You made my childhood so enjoyable. Every family trip outing was infinitely better with you. It's because of you that I didn't have one boring moment in my life, and why home is the most fun place in the world. Thank you to my parents for raising both of us to be the men who we are today. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to grow into the man that I am now, that loves God, family, and virtue. Let me tell you guys a story. Every swimming carnival, my dad would be the only dad to make an appearance and cheer me on. All the other boys would be like, hey look, that's your dad, that's your dad. 
and oh, I was so embarrassed every single time. <laughs> now I realize that I was the luckiest boy there. These are very core memories to me, and for that, I think about whenever I think about that, I feel very, very loved. To my beautiful mom and handsome dad, <laughs> I know today is a bittersweet day for you. Mom, you always say to me how you wish that you never agreed for Clement and I to come to Sydney alone at such a young age. Having two kids leaving home at that time was quite a traumatic time for you and Dad. But I think that all those times apart actually made us even closer and treasure the moments when we are together even more. And also, like, if you never sent me to Australia, like, I would never have met Dan, so thank you. <laughs> Even though I am now a 31-year-old grown-ass woman, you will still walk me to the train station each morning whenever you're visiting Sydney. Wave me goodbye and blow me kisses as the doors close with the whole train watching. <laughs> it is extremely embarrassing, but I also secretly love it. Daniel, I'm so proud of the man that you are. Since the very start of our relationship, I always tell you that being with you is like being on a holiday. No matter how many difficulties I encounter on the outside, as long as I'm with you, all my worries melt away, and I always feel so much peace and at home with you. Harriet, you have this strange ability to make every single serious situation so light-hearted and so fun. And I know that we won't take each other for granted. I know we will keep living each day closer and closer to God and to each other as well in love in our marriage. Daniel, we went through so much together in the last few years and by God's grace, all those experiences only strengthened us individually and I'm so honoured that you chose me to be your wife. I look forward to cooking you lots of yummy food, make you laugh every day and taking care of you for the rest of my life. Harriet, I promise you this, I will make every effort to share my thoughts, my mind, my body and my soul with you, giving more and more of myself each day that passes.